Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Just wanted to wish happy holidays to you and yours for everyone that celebrates those, whatever holidays you celebrate. Uh, looking forward to a wonderful next year. So this is the weekly chart of the Dow crossed over silver. We're going to come back to this when we look at the Jeff Nielsen article that we're going to look at. But you can see that we had a period of time where I was pointing out where it looked like the pattern was reversing. You can see right in here when silver started its rally. Uh, this is when we got a correction in stocks and silver started to rally. And I've said for the longest time, longest time that these are going to cross. I still do believe they're going to cross in an extreme fashion. But you can see right here at this point, the silver market topped and the stock market bottomed and stocks just absolutely ran away from there. It was right here with the election of Trump that they absolutely went through the roof and silver's been falling. So question regarding silver and whether we're going to get new lows. Uh, we have to go by this lower trend line here and you can see that it goes all the way back to the beginning of the bull market. It touches at the price of 14 in the beginning of the year in 2016 and it's hovering around 15 now. So a penetration of that $15 price for silver is going to mean um, the bottom might fall out possibly. Uh, because that's going to be a penetration of this trend line, which is held for 13 years. Can it happen? Yes, it can happen. Would it be a ridiculous buy? It would be an insane buy. If you think about just the math on that, the $8.50 price we got in 2008 back here, if we got anywhere near that price a good eight or nine years later, uh, that would be... An incredible buy something the equivalent to what we had back here in 2004 based on uh, inflation adjusted prices you can see just using the stock market as an inflation gauge that the stock market has basically tripled since the beginning of the silver bull market and has if you look at here from 2008 bottom, the Dow was at 8,000, and uh, so it's gone up two and a half times from that bottom, whereas silver isn't even twice as high. So silver is clearly undervalued at this point. As I said in my interview with Elijah, I, I'm not even interested in picking a bottom at this point. It's just a green light for stacking. So let's jump over to the Bitcoin chart. Now, Bitcoin has made an interesting move. You can see here on the Bitfinex chart, we have a classic uh, pennant formation breakout. We have this large pennant here, which is from that top to this area here. We also have a smaller pennant in here. And you can see it broke both those pennants uh, that have the same sort of bottom line here. So definite bull move in Bitcoin. Now, one thing that's very interesting to me is I pointed out before that uh, using my Poloniex account, I used a US dollar uh, equivalent coin to hedge against a decline in Bitcoin. That was when this spike was hit. I thought the market had moved too much too fast and switched over into that. Uh, but so one thing that we're seeing now that's kind of different is that it appears that some hedging is going on in other cryptocurrencies. Now this is a complicated thing and I've done this myself. When I've got a fairly large amount of Bitcoins in my trading account and I think that Bitcoins run too far, I've hedged with other cryptocurrencies. The problem with that is this, that those cryptocurrencies are quoted in Bitcoin. So it's not really a true hedge. Now, if you look at the Litecoin to US dollar chart here, you can see that Litecoin has just recently made a move and it's been really sick 
even almost dead for a very long time. We have to go out to the three day chart. You can see how down and out Litecoin is, considering that at one point Litecoin was $48 a coin and now it's four. So a 90% bear market. But at the same time, it appears that there has been a lot of buying activity coming in. You can see the move from $3.6 per Litecoin, 3.5 to 4.6 in a very short amount of time on that day. Now we can see it better when we go over to the crypto coin, world coin index here. And before we look at that, I want to point out to you here that the crypto market cap is now 23 billion. If you remember, I was covering that fairly frequently uh, a while ago and you remember it was hovering around that 12 to 13 billion market cap and you can see that we've doubled. Now where should it be? It, it should be at least a trillion dollars. So it should move um, at least 40 fold from here, 40 to 50 fold from here for it to be useful, for people to be able to move large amounts of money for a lot of people to be able to move large amounts of money anywhere in the world. It needs to be larger than this. But $23 billion is a lot bigger than it was just not too long ago. Now, if you look at these charts here, I'm just gonna try to show you a comparison. You can see that the, the Bitcoin rally started and then you can see this rally in Litecoin that started kind of after Bitcoin had topped. Now that gives me the idea that some people decided that Bitcoin had moved enough and they were actually going to hedge in another crypto. Now that's very, very important because that means if people hedge in another cryptocurrency, they're actually not taking their money out of cryptocurrencies. They're just moving it to a different cryptocurrency. That keeps that market cap up. You can see the same sort of thing here in the Monero chart. You can see it also in the Zcash chart. And that's one I've been watching for a very long time. At some point, I'd like to accumulate, I think I have two Zcash right now, but I'd like to accumulate this coin when it finally reaches a bottom, simply because I like the idea of having an anonymous coin. So that's the kind of hedging that we've seen. That's a new phenomenon, it's something that I've done in the past, but it's not something that I've seen the market do. So interesting change of uh, strategy there for the market. So let's go over to the Jeff Nielsen article. This is a great article. The reason why I love Jeff Nielsen is because he really doesn't pull any punches. Now I've mentioned before that I had a debate with Jeff Nielsen one time where uh, we kind of disagreed about the problems with capitalism and socialism. I wouldn't say that Jeff's a socialist. He, he defends free markets with gold and silver, but the best way I could explain his position is that he believes that capitalism leads to corruption, whereas I believe that free markets and capitalism are the best way to produce wealth and that corruption is not an essential part of capitalism. Corruption is corruption and it has nothing to do with capitalism. So yes, capitalism needs to be policed for corruption, but so does every other system. That's kind of where we disagree, but we totally agree when it comes to the manipulation of gold and silver. And like I said, he doesn't pull any punches. So let's read this article. This is a fantastic article. December 16, 2016. It is both one of the greatest contradictions and greatest frauds in the entire realm of markets, the US interest rate contradiction. The facts are these. At the end of 2008, the Federal Reserve, with other Western central banks in tow, embarked upon the most extreme monetary policies in Western monetary history, quantitative easing, monetizing debt, and 0% interest rates, i.e. free money. A so-called 0% interest rate is a prima facie fraud. By definition, an interest rate is a positive number. It is the price of capital. The price for any good which has value must be greater than zero in any, any legitimate transaction. To pay a price of zero dollars or less for something of value is an obvious fraud. It is upon this fraud 
the U.S. has based its monetary system for the past eight years, mitigated ever so slightly by two token rate increases from the Fed in recent years. In 2008, when the Federal Reserve embarked upon its legal fraud, it, along with other central banks, promised to normalize interest rates immediately in 2009. It was the exit strategy of which the Fed Chairman B.S. Bernanke boasted at the time. There was no exit strategy, and after a few years of lip service, the phrase was abandoned altogether by Bernanke and the rest of the central bank liars. The same central banks, bankers who had solemnly promised to never copy Japan, were deliberately copying Japan. However, starting in 2011, something strange began happening in markets. A divergence appeared which has persisted to this day. During 2009, 2010, and the early part of 2011, equity markets, and particularly U.S. markets, were rising, and so were precious metals markets, as this central bank insanity equated to the most bullish fundamentals in the history of, preci of the precious metals markets. Bernanke and the rest of the Fed liars regularly talked about raising interest rates, something which is supposedly bearish for both equity markets and precious metal markets, the reason why higher interest rates are bearish for equities is simple. It raises the price of capital, i.e. credit, which is bearish for equity markets in several respects. The reason why higher interest rates are supposedly bearish for precious metals is more mythology than fact, but let's put that issue aside. The Fed talked about raising interest rates over and over, but it never did anything. And so equities markets and precious metals markets continued to rise. Indeed, while the devious Bernanke was talking exit strategy out of one side of his mouth, he was boasting of the wealth effect out of the other side, pointing out how his extravagant money printing was pumping up U.S. markets. Suddenly, in the spring of 2011, the great interest rate contradiction began. Suddenly, precious metal prices began to fall. Why? Because the Federal Reserve was about to raise interest rates. It was a mantra preached by the corporate media every day starting in the spring of 2011. And you know what the spring of 2011 was. That was the silver smashdown top. It is a mantra which the corporate media continued to preach every day and precious metals prices fell day after day, week after week, month after month. From the spring of 2011 to the end of 2015, the price of silver fell from a high of $49 an ounce U.S. dollars to a low of $13 an ounce, representing a decline of almost 75%. The price of silver fell by 75% because the Fed, quote, was going to raise interest rates, end quote. While during that time, there was only one token increase. The price of silver fell every day just on talk that the Fed would raise rates. Yet after each Fed meeting, when it failed to raise rates, the price only rose for one day. The silver market moved every day on talk and it only moved for one day on actions. Totally perverse. The situation was similar in the gold market, except not as extreme. The price of gold fell from a high of over 1,900 US uh, dollars per ounce to a low of under 1,100 US dollars per ounce, a greater than 40% plunge. The price of gold fell, ev fell on every Fed talk. It rose for only one day on its action actions, the failure to act. Then for a brief period of time, starting in the beginning of 2016, the Fed hex miraculously vanished. For the nearly six months, which regular readers know as the fake rally, the same talk that had caused precious metals prices to fall relentlessly week after week ceased to have any effect on these markets. Then just like some crooked banker flipping some invisible switch, the talk of the Federal Reserve raising interest rates again began sending precious metal prices lower every day. Indeed, one of the primary reasons why readers were warned that the fake rally had ended was that the Fed hex was back. Once again, all it takes any time, any day to send precious metal prices lower is for any of the two-faced Fed heads to mouth the words, raise interest rates. 
What have we seen over the past several weeks? We've seen gold and silver prices falling on the talk that finally this time the Fed was actually going to raise interest rates for the second time in eight years. To say that precious metals markets had already priced in this rate hike would be one of the greatest understatements in the history of the English language. Yet, what have we seen since the Fed raised rates? Gold and silver prices have continued to fall. Why? Just ask the corporate media. They have fallen for several days because the Fed raised interest rates. Despite prices falling week after week, month after month, year after year on mere talk of raising interest rates, despite prices rising for only one day each time the Fed failed to raise interest rates, prices are supposed to continue to fall, we're told, day after day to price in the rate increase. Totally perverse, but it gets worse. What have we seen in U.S. equity markets since the spring of 2011? Did they turn lower on mere talk of raising U.S. interest rates? No. They continued higher in 2011. They continued higher in 2012. They continued higher in 2013. They continued higher in 2014. They continued higher in 2015. And they continued higher in 2016. The same Fed hex that managed to torpedo precious metals markets day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, has had absolutely no effect at all on U.S. equity markets. They rose when the Fed talked about raising rates. They rose even more strongly each time it failed to raise rates and for several days afterwards. Yet after eight years of these U.S. bubble markets going higher and higher, when the Federal Reserve finally announced its second token increase, the U.S. markets paused for only one day and then have immediately began bubbling higher again. Indeed, we have even gotten the totally absurd proclamation from the corporate media that higher U.S. interest rates are no longer bad for U.S. equities, just for gold and silver totally perverse. Precious metals markets go down for five plus years every day on talk by the Fed liars of raising interest rates. Then they fall even harder for several days more to price in any token rate increase which actually occurs. U.S. equities markets go up for eight years every day despite talk by Fed liars of raising interest rates. Then when a token rate increase actually occurs, they fall for one day. Given the new math from the corporate media, maybe U.S. equity markets will actually go up the next time a token Fed rate increase occurs. Much more likely, however, is that this latest media and market perversity is simply the last gasp of euphoric insanity before the one bank pops the bubble, which it has worked so hard to inflate so it can shear the sheep on the way down, then start the new bubble and crash cycle. For precious metal investors, you were warned. The fake rally wouldn't last. Prices would turn lower before gold hit 1500 and the downturn would become part of a general crash whenever the banking crime syndicate chose to detonate these bubble markets. Prices have turned lower. The bankers have ensured that the precious metals charts look dreadful and these U.S. bubble markets could not be more ripe for detonation. However, As has been explained previously, those readers hoping and waiting to load up on gold or silver at cash crash prices will almost certainly be disappointed. Anecdotal evidence that these markets have gotten increasingly tight surfaces often from a multitude of sites and sources, notably both the U.S. Mint and Royal Canadian Mint have been rationing the supply of silver to their customers. During the crash of 08, when silver hit $8 an ounce low, there was no silver to be had except for the largest bars, 100 ounce and up. During the crash of 2016-17, we can only expect the situation to be significantly worse after eight more years of supply deficits in the silver market. To date, we have not seen similar signs of ultimate stress in the supply of gold. However, that situation could change in a heartbeat at any time the general panic and rock at any time of general panic and rock bottom prices. Assume there will be little if any bullion available when the next crash ensues. In 2011 or even 2012, if we had even if we had been told we would 
be able to buy silver at $16 and buy gold at $1,130 an ounce than even with our Harper debauched Canadian dollars we would have left at the opportunity. Now is certainly not the time for precious metal investors to get greedy. Assume that the bottom is here. For those who wish to buy, buy now. Because when the phony lows occur in the banker's ultimate ultra fraudulent paper markets it's almost certain that all you will be able to buy there is paper great commentary from jeff nielsen i've always loved his commentaries he doesn't pull any punches so let's get back to the silver and equities chart here now the question arises why we, we know what's happening jeff did a very good job of summarizing exactly what's happening the central bankers are pumping up paper assets and they are deliberately destroying the prices of precious metals. Why? The biggest reason is because equity markets are markets where they can immediately steal your money anytime they want to. If they want to take it by uh, making the markets crash, they can take it that way. If they want to take it by declaring the DTCC uh, bankrupt and unable to deliver the certificates, it calls all stock certificates into question. They can do it that way. If they want to have a terrorist emergency like they did at 9-11 and shut the markets down, close the stock market for a week or in the past the market has been closed for even up to six months, they can do that. They basically have complete control over the stock market because it's really just digital entries in various computers. There really isn't any true wealth there. Now, the precious metals, especially the physical markets, really only the physical markets, are completely different. There is real wealth there. They cannot confiscate it by turning a switch, flipping a button. Uh, I'm sorry, I got those backwards. Uh, flipping a switch, pressing a button. They can't just turn off the wealth of physical assets. So that's the reason why the powers that be pump up these paper assets. There's no cost to them and they can easily get those assets back anytime they choose to. And we'll talk to you next time.